And to make matters worse, General Ewing issued Order Number 11 on August the 25th, ordering the evacuation of all citizens, loyal or not, from the border counties of Jackson, Cass, Bates, and Vernon, with the exception of certain large towns. Any property that the owners could not carry away was to be destroyed by federal troops. There were no provisions made for the refugees or compensation for their property. George was outraged by the severity of the order, and he protested the Ewing without avail. Now, according to C.B. Rollins, James' son, he told Ewing, quote, If you persist in executing that order, I will make you infamous with pen and brush as far as I am able, unquote. Now, the end of the war saw a more reconciliatory tone return to George's uh, speech and writings. While he had deplored the traitorous behavior of the secessionists, and I think I've given ample op, uh, demonstration of how he felt about them, uh, he was opposed to punitive treatment of those who had supported the South, but who were now will, uh, willing to take the oath of loyalty and return to the fold, so, so to speak. However, this position of moderation often put him at odds with the harsh reconstruction policies of the radical wing of the Republican Party in Missouri. So by November of 1865, George was released from office of state treasurer. Now, whether or not he threatened Ewing uh, to, to make him infamous, uh, there's some debate among some scholars whether he actually said that. However, his order, anger over order number 11, there we go, had not cooled, and he set to work painting martial law or order number 11, which he had originally titled Civil War. And this is the painting, of course, and this is George's own description of it. Quote, the principal group in the foreground of the picture chiefly consists of a venerable patriarch and his family who have just been ejected from their dwelling, which is about to be committed to the flames. A daughter clings to the form of the old man, imploring him to temper his language so as not to incur the vengeance of the brutal assassin who in the act of drawing a pistol threatens him in the front. Another daughter is on her knees before this wretch, vainly endeavoring to awaken some emotion of humanity in his callous breast. A married son lies weltering in his own blood, his young wife bending in agony over his lifeless body. The aged mother has fallen in a swoon and is supported in the arms of a faithful Negro woman. A Negro man retires, weeping from the scene, accompanied by a Negro lad whose face bears the unmistakable marks of fright and horror. Immediately in the rear of the outraged family, the Myrmidons of Kansas, aided by their criminal allies in federal uniform, are busily engaged in the work of pillage. Some of them on horseback have already encumbered themselves with spoil wearing apparel, household furniture, and everything portable is being placed in wagons, a long train of which, well freighted with plunder, is seen in the distance, wending its way to the westward, while a melancholy procession of dejected and impoverished refugees fleeing from their desolated homes file off to the right in the opposite direction. The outhouses Barns, etc., the family mansion are in flames, and dense columns of smoke therefrom cast their broad shadows over the landscape. The military edict thus cruelly enforced was directed not against rebels or citizens charged with any crime, but against all persons, regardless of age, sex, condition, or character, residing within the designated limits, unquote. And that's quite a statement. Uh, clearly, George wanted to make a statement with this painting. 
An exhibition of the picture provoked violent controversy everywhere it went. A Reverend R.S. Johnson of Independence in 1868 declared, quote, it is no better than a falsehood, unquote. Another critic said that the work of an artist should be to, quote, heal all the bitterness of the past and learn to forget its harsh features, unquote. Now, George, uh, still often quick and temperamental in his rebuttals, said that the purpose of Order Number 11 was to, quote, hand over to eternal infamy the perpetrators and defenders of outrages which scarcely find a parallel in the most barbarous ages, unquote. 